how's it in the name of Jesus Christ? Hi, how's it? I say that again. Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl, Cran Kate Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. I hope you're in a neat little bench. If you're not, welcome to the party. Uh, Sid, it's the story of our lives. Uh, this is a filter, just putting it out there. I'm not wearing glasses for real. So don't be afraid when it falls off or anything of that nature. Uh, I quite like how it applies on the doll. You are also very potentially listening to Animated for Jesus, so let's just put that out there. Shout out to Animated for Jesus. Um, if it's a doll, but if it's uh, not the doll, then yo, what's up? Okay, we have to discuss stuff. I'm under a lot of spiritual attack, but um, that's just something that happens every single day. And we just deal, we just take it in our stride, and we strive in Christ. I have to talk about something, um, because it's just time. I, I took a break for two days, and um, I can't just sit and not uh, share what's on my heart for too long, because then I get like mightily depressed. So we are not going to just linger on this. And there is something that is chilling on my heart that I want to share. Like, I'm under a severity of demonic attack, okay? Demonic attack, and for those reasons... I just, I need to share this. With or without this quiet, I just need to share it, okay? Mm-hmm. I apologize. I was putting down my coffee. Okay, I just switched off the Wi-Fi so it doesn't distract me. Switching on and off, switching on and off, switching on and off. Uh, okay, let me just redo my hair to make it a little bit more hairdo-y. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, moving on. So we, we've done nice hair. We're going to discuss a little sum sum. Y'all, um, okay, so my enemies. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you are mine. Okay, no, we are not going to be singing today. Mm, um, at all. Just talking. So you can, uh, you know, lo long story short, guys, creepy, creepy, creepy stuff happens around Christians. Uh, creepy, creepy, not just around Christians, but when, when the devil is doing a thing. Creepy, creepy stuff will happen. That's why the Bible says that. Do not consider it strange when you go through trials of different kinds because then, uh, you know, stuff happens. Like, okay, basically that is for the testing of your faith. And if judgment begins with the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, then you should expect that weird, creepy stuff is going to happen when the devil is trying to latch on to a circumstance because he's been all up in it for a minute. Um, He's not going to, like, easily let it go. Back in the day, I used to use that song as a joke. not Well, to create some kind of a, a, a jocose nuance to the circumstance at play. But it's not really a joke, because there's nothing funny about it. How it is that demons um, operate in the climate of an individual. Baby-like, listen. We ain't going nowhere. Ticky ticky, we ain't going nowhere. They like that. They like that song. We ain't going nowhere. And... Their not going nowhereness is is really just a threat. Satan is below the belt. He steals, kills, and destroys, but he's extremely below the belt. So I'm here trying to encourage people to do better by themselves and to turn over to Jesus, to just not carry on in whatever state they're in right now, because like it's not going to end well. And I keep saying that, okay? Uh, but I want to give you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful case study. I want to give you a, an incentive. Those of you who are trapped in darkness, you are not safe. You are not safe, okay? Um, indeed, that's just it. You're trapped, right? You're not okay. You're not okay. I was not okay at some point, but I inevitably will be fine, right? It is written in God's word. Uh, I apologize. I don't have decorum because life is hard. <clears throat> it's written in God's word that... We war not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against authorities, etc. So essentially like demons and stuff. And yo, <laughs> Satan is, you know how he is? He's like that neighbor. The neighbor guy that um, you invite into your house one day because he's newly moved into the complex where you stay. And then he just doesn't leave. Like he comes, like he will knock. Even the Bible describes such a neighbor as this. He says in the Bible, it is in the Proverbs, it is described that don't be that neighbor. Like start, don't, don't like don't visit your next door neighbor every day and be a snare to them. Like give some people some space. It is wise to know when it's time to leave, right? So of course, then the the opposite of that which is considered wise by God will then be done by the devil to just really get all up in your grill. But that neighbor does not get to chill. Like you know that neighbor, yeah. You invite him once into your house. And you, you, you share bread, you break bread, you have ichemer or whatnot, and it's, it's good for the day. 
and then John goes home in the evening, and then tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. he's knocking on your door. Peter, Peter! Pinky Pinky, whatever might be your name. No, that was not intentional. We're not speaking about the spooky Pinky Pinky here, but we're speaking about the Pinky Chicky. The lady, whose name is Pinky. Go, 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 Pinky. Here is this neighbor chick all up in your grill again. She starts to become a tick, a fly. And Pinky's like, hi, uh, still yawning, like taco, still taking out the taco. I'm not going to work because it's a Saturday. And, and she's like, um, can I help you? Is there something you need? And Pinky was like, yeah, did you hear about this thing? Da, da, da. And as she's busy talking, she's walking into your house. And she's sitting on your couch and she's usha buffo, twirling on your twirling chair. And, and it's just chilling there. And you're still like trying to situate yourself. You, you haven't even brushed your teeth. You've got halitosis. You know, you literally just, you, this person took you out of bed. And because the knock was as loud as it was, you imagined it was an emergency. And that's why you got out of bed and quickly just opened. Only for this person to just burst into your house. Because you invited them yesterday. And then they leave after like two and a half hours. Only because you said um, you've got an appointment or something. The whole time you've been brushing your teeth in front of them. You, you, you have been yawning. You've been saying, oh, you know, I'm so busy. You've been acting in ways so as to suggest please leave, like basically dropping hints. And this person just don't go. This person out here is unprepared to get the step and they don't want to bounce. Mm. Yeah, until you basically tell them, okay, so I have a meeting at 2 p.m. and I got a shower for it. I'll see you next time. Yeah, and this person's like, oh, okay, cool. No, I don't mean to the pose anyway. Um, good hanging out, neighbor. And then this person, the two days later, go, 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 go. Yeah, and it just keeps happening until you actively start avoiding your neighbor. They become a snare to you. You jump, like, with PTSD every time you hear a knock on the door. You don't know who it is. It could be her. It could be him, you know, depending, yeah, on the the, 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 the influence and in question. And this person just ain't trying to leave. Well, I mean, a neighbor like that. You could be gentle. You could be coy. You could be sweet. You could be perpetually just being on some, yo. Know, um, like I've got a meeting. Um, I gotta pick up the kids. Um, I've got a bake bread. Um, you can't keep making excuses, but the only thing that's gonna work with that rando is when you put your foot down. That's the only thing that's gonna work. It's, it's, the, it's the only, only, only thing that is going to work. Putting your foot down. Alright. The only thing... I can't got distracted there. The only thing that's going to work on, on your neighbor... Uh, is, is, is to put your foot down. Okay, please drive out. Like, just give me peace. Okay, I need to be able to speak without distractions, without feeling like I'm being surveilled, and without being uncomfortable. Thank you, thank you, thank you for driving off. Okay, yeah. Mm. The only thing that's going to work on this lackluster neighbor of yours is if you put your foot down. There's something I need to check, guys. Okay, I was checking to see if the first part saved because the first little recorded snippet saved because then that would be like I'd be like just commencing from some strange hollow place. Yeah, the only thing that's going to work is if you put your foot down and putting your foot down is hard, okay? It's a lot easier to just accommodate people and sway left to right and not enter into confrontation to basically just take a lot of nonsense lying down because you don't want to hurt some people. The path of least resistance is easy. It's easy. Do you understand? But for the sake of your peace... You have to be that girl, you know? You have to be that guy, you know? Like, you don't want to be that guy, but you're gonna have to be that guy. It's not comfortable. It hurts to hurt people. It hurts to see pain in their eyes. It sucks to see that somebody feels sad, that you just said something. But absent of putting... Oh, goodness gracious, please just leave me alone. Ish. A second. Absent of, of putting your foot down. Absent of putting your foot down. Uh, you, you are never gonna get peace. So... Even though you don't want to be that guy, even though you don't want to be that girl, I've got something in my eye. My goodness. Ugh, one second. Okay, the thing in my eye is just gonna stay in my eye until further notice. I really don't know. Like, yeah, you know those things that are just in your eye and they just stay and they stay and they stay and they just they stay. They hang out. Okay, there's my cat. She's, she's inside my mom's car because she left her door open and the cat just hopped in there and chilled. Okay, cool, right, yeah, you know those people that just linger, they linger, they linger, and they linger some more. And they stay, and they stay. Goodness gracious, give me a break, man, guys, stop walking around all up in my grill when I'm doing this work. I don't have battery, um, to, like, I, yeah, my battery runs out, like, and I just have to keep charging it again and whatnot. So, the sooner I can just get this message out, the better, so I don't have to do many, many parts, like, just leave me alone, man. Stop walking around, guys. Yo, I want my independence back. Yes, well, I want to be able to just do what I need to do without distractions. 
been living like this for 10 years. It's just, it sucks. Anyway, my train of thought is all distracted because there's just too much activity going on around me. Anyway, yeah, I, I really, 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 like, my train of thought needs to be recollected. Like a calm and a peaceful person. Like, just give me a rest. Goodness gracious, like, too much activity. I literally cannot deal. And now I'm scratching my head because that's how I deal. That's how I cope. Hey. Okay, fine. Alrighty. Let's just get straight back into this thing. Um, yes, the only way, please just drive off, like, entirely just reverse, go, 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 so I am not distracted, my mind needs to focus. Okay, the only thing that's going to deal with that pesky neighbor is putting your foot down. You know, nobody wants to be that guy, nobody wants to be that girl, but in the absence of being that girl or that guy, you are going to perpetually just keep on enduring, uh, frankly, just an unacceptable presence in your life. Yeah. When there's no when to stop, people know when to leave, good guests know when to, you know, goodbye type thing. And the lingering types are like Satan. Satan is like the lingering types and the lingering, type, lingering types are like Satan. Okay? It's your house. At the end of the uncomfortable day, it's your house. And you get to determine who stays and who goes. Right? All I've been there. Um, and your pesky neighbor, absent of you putting your foot down with the authority that you have, given that this is your house. Yeah, absent of you doing that, you're just gonna accommodate and, 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 and suffer a, a presence in, in your life that is uncomfortable to have around. Uncomfortable to just keep on sticking by. The devil is that way. Very unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, well, actually, rather, I'm trying to, um, my ministry is more for women, but you get my point. When I'm speaking prophecy, I guess I speak to everyone. Um, but yeah, women are not to teach men, so that's something that I just need to keep and highlighting out there that I'm not trying to teach here. I'm trying to prophesy and I'm also trying to evangelize. All right. Something that God is just depositing in my, in my core and I'm, I'm sharing it here. Yeah. Satan, uh, is, is, is this okie that will knock like on, on your door like he can't just come in he can't just come in he gotta knock but you see people daft we are daft we are we are forsaken in the way that we we think in here our brains have said goodbye we are daft we open doors for people that we ought not open we don't do checks we we, we don't do background checks we just open ah your doors out here yawning Ugh, like a sleepy baby and everything just flies in there. And now you, you're dealing with this pesky rando that won't leave unless you put your foot down. Burp. I'm sorry, like I get to burp. Okay, and my filter's gonna be flying off and on every so often. Just deal, that's life. Okay, as I drink my coffee. Satan is, is ridiculous that way. Just like your neighbor, Pinky. Just like your neighbor, Petros. Yeah, the guy or the girl is gonna keep coming. Unless you make it clear that, look, <laughs> you're good peoples. Uh, but this is my house and I enjoy my peace. I pay bond every month that I might rest easy in my comfortable home. And you have made it uncomfortable. You've made me sing that song from back in the day. You make me want to throw my pager out the window. Sell my house so I can move because you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. It's not hard how you be pitching all up in my house at 7 a.m. in the morning while I'm sleeping by. And it's not hard that you even knock like you're the police acting as if though somebody is dead. When I first met you, we were cool. I thought that you were good people. You had just moved into my neighborhood and I was introducing you to the people around. But now, you won't let go. You are just out here hanging out. You are like a tick in my uncomfortable hair. And I don't know what, what to do. It's not hard how you keep coming every single second day, maybe every day, and I'm not gonna do this any, 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 any more with you. You make me wanna throw my cell phone out the window, make my windows all boarded up, sell my house so I can move, cause you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. I mean, you could sing them that Disney's Child song. Or you could just like cordially, you know, danko, like gentle. We are out here not trying to be mean or whatever, but yo, this is my house and uh, I enjoy it. It's peaceful. It's tranquil, especially on Saturdays when I wake up, I hear the birds chirping. Recognize I don't got to go to work, so I'm feeling all good inside. I'm swaying in my bed like it's a hammock. And then, kaka ka, ka you knock. It's not hard how you keep pitching all up in my door. You make me want to sell my house. Girl, get the step and I'm not failing this. Every day you just are such a bugaboo. Mm-mm. Ah, uh, Satanus, -uh. he, he will make you want to throw your pager out the window. 
Sell your house so you can move Cause he a bugaboo, a bugaboo Ain't nobody I just need to be selling no house Y'all need to be telling this bugger to stop coming Yeah Would you move out of a house because it seems he's buzzing And it's just sitting there I saw the wah you will even slap your face just to get rid of that thing. Mm. You will clap yourself just to get rid of that thing. Wow! It's better to endure that clap bombs, that, that little pain. Yeah. Then just just deal with this thing. Like, it's unacceptable. But when you're just telling a, a fly, I'm gonna sell my house so I can move. Cause you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. When you're telling a fly that it's a bugaboo so you're gonna sell your house and move. Ah, uh, suga. The fly don't get to win. Like, nah. This is my house. I've got a bond on it. I own the title deed. You go. You go. I was comfortable here. I was chilling. I was maxing out. The sun was shining. And the weather was sweet. All up in my grizzle. And then my feet got... violent that's what i'm getting at it has to become kind of aggressive you know you have to get out of your comfort zone in order to get rid of that fly because if you don't <laughs> but it's your house would you move out would you move out of your house because of of, of some flies like like 20 50 of them because of an infestation of ants a colony of them on your kitchen counter Huh? Because of, of like a, a, a roach infestation no no honey you get fumigators you get fumigators. If the problem is that bad, you might leave maybe to live in a hotel for three days, but during that time of which there is an active fumigation on your property. At your property, you, you don't just leave. And so that neighbor, <laughs> that makes you want to sell your house so you can move because he's a bugaboo, a bugaboo. You ain't even papa. The guy moved in later. He came in afterwards. It's your neighborhood, frankly, and he's just living in it. Yeah. Um. He found you there first. Your grandmama been all up in that house. Your great grandmama been all up in there. Your mama been all up in there. Your great 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 mama been up there all up in there. Papa, like your family going back, <laughs> like forty generations have been living there. And then this dude is like, <laughs> you could move. You you could just keep going from pillar to post, finally just trying to find yourself some peace again because some neighbor moved into your backyard, but they're everywhere. These entities live among us. They're everywhere. They're everywhere in society. They, 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 they frequent this earth. It is written in God's word, in the book of Job. All right, in the book of Job, in the book of Job, that when the devil was asked by, by God Almighty, where you been? Satan, where you been? Papa, this was his response. I mean, like, y'all, you can't make this stuff up. His response was, ain't not much, just, you know, everywhere. <laughs> his response and not much just everywhere he, he said i've been to and from up and down the earth roaming it that was satan's response Mastrata. or in this instance seeing as he's a male Rastrata. he's all about that skontiri cul-de-sac like he be out here manifesting t-junction and pedestrian crossing Mastrata. everywhere you close the window Uda. he is a threat of peace he's a thief of course and with him stealing all that peace all up in your grill, you could move. But according to God's word in the book of Job, the devil is to and fro the earth up and about us. So, uzo, tola laya corn. Like a tail, he's gonna follow you. This is not gonna end well. You can move from Bryanston to Soweto. He there. You can move from Soweto to KwaZulu. Equamash, he there. You can move to Kukule to he there. You can move to Umkuku, he there. You can move to the mines of Anglo-Platinum. Underground, he there. 
Like that dude be there, you can go to the ocean. Those of y'all involved in the occult, sit under the sea. He's especially there. He there! Like Ariel, what's up with the ticket? Ding, 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 under the sea, under the sea. And I am Nemo, because I've been found. Mm. He there! The devil is everywhere. And we know in the book of Job that that's a thing. That Onalis Pizza Parafini, he's like the flash that way. Travels at like super speeds to and from up and about it to the point where, I mean, who says that? Who says that? Like, imagine somebody walking up in the morning, hey, okay, in the office. Good morning, John. How are you? No, I'm good. And, and then you're like, John, so like, why, why weren't you here last night? Or oh, what was going on over there? We had like a whole uh, project to deliver. We had to burn the midnight oil. We were not supposed to leave on time at work because everybody needs to put in their part. Where were you, John? And then he's like, no, it's cool. Up and up and down the earth roaming. It. I was in uh, in Brazil and then I just did a stop there by Spain, following which I then did another stop there by, by Colombia. And then I just kind of hit a little bit of a detour in Ghana. And then I was all up in Congo just saying, what's up, good peoples, following which I then found myself just hanging out in Australia. And then I decided that I'm going to come right back into the office after. Whoa, dude, so you went to all those places in the space of like, what, 12 hours? Who are you, the Incredible Flash? It turns out he's the Incredible Flash. Traveling to and fro in ways that will make the biggest and baddest travelers in the world covet. It's enviable, frankly, how quickly he can just be in Brazil after being in South Africa. He there! Everywhere. That's your Satan for you. How you can tell that this Oki's not at? He's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere all at the same time. He's not gone, but he's fast. Oh, fast to this guy. And fast, like flesh. You know? He's like the flesh. The devil is like the flesh, traveling in super speed to a point where, when the Lord asks him, his boss, where you at? Where you been? To and from Brazil, South Africa, Congo, Lesotho. I've been all up about, about that UK business. I was chilling in, in, in Machu Picchu. I was also seeing it fit to just kind of hang out with my peoples under the sea. Under the sea, because we got a city down there. Yeah. Uh, but like now I'm real bored. How you doing? Uh, got an assignment for me. What you think about that dude, Job? I'm not feeling him. Mmm, make me do what I want to do to that guy and then you'll see he gonna leave you be. He gonna leave you be. He ain't gonna care no more about you. He gonna leave you be. Just give me that assignment and I'm on it like a bear. That was Satan. Everywhere. All at the same time. So, I mean, you could move. You could. You could. You make me want to throw my pager out the window. Yeah, you're gonna buy another pager. You're gonna buy another iPhone. You're gonna buy another laptop. And he's gonna be all up in there like a bug. Malware. He's gonna be all up in there like a, a baby tiny d -ding. Like a virus. Yeah, he's just gonna keep on infecting your computer with a hack. So, I mean, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when he comes for you? Dum dum. Satan ain't honest, but he pays some of y'all's bills. Satan ain't honest, but he pays your bills. Yeah. Cause you feel like I mean I was going to the moon to I can't escape. I can't. He keeps patrickering me everywhere. He keeps on patrickering me. He keeps on just, you know, cornering me on all sides. So I mean if you can't beat him, join him. Seeing as he's like earlier, I'm just gonna take him in my stride. That's the Earth's mentality concerning Satan, eh? Yeah. What you gonna do when he comes for you? Dun dun. Can't nobody eat unless they love the devil. Can't nobody eat unless they love the devil. <laughs> he is very, very manipulative that way. Make you convinced. Makes you feel convinced that Papa, you can't do none right unless you you sell your soul to him. Hmm? Worship me and I will give you the kingdom of this planet. That's what the devil said to Christ. Worship me and I will give you everything you want. And don't come tell me about Jesus. I'm going to our back. And then you go and you just ride that wave. You just, you, you literally let this dude come and hang in your apartment, knocking on your door every single day. And just like that pestilent neighbor. Mm, just like that ridiculous pinky that just is not barging. Okay. All up in your doorstep at 630 in the morning, every day, every day. Mm. Yeah, that is what is good. <laughs> you tend to have invited him in at first. You tend to have invited him in. You're the one that was like, Hi, Pinky, with a casserole. Hi, Pinky, welcome to the neighborhood. I am Jemima, and I really love that you moved in, Eddie. Our neighbor that moved out was so racist, 
so I'm glad that we've got a fellow sister next door and we can talk and we can exchange notes and we can do whatever. I also have booster cable in my car just in case yours gets stuck. So you see, scratch my back, I scratch yours. Tit for tat, iron sharp on iron. Yes, 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 I'm happy. You know but it's your hair, Pinky. To mama, Pinky, together for life. BFF, I'm gonna love you for life. Ooh, eh. that went to die, Pinky, met the casserole dancing, thinking that you are just impressing some neighbors, thinking that your former neighbor is the problem, cause you are just complaining against beats racist slurs every time you play Afro beats. Mm, yeah, we had neighbors like those, by the way. Yeah, the opposite here, like some racist uh, couple that could not stand Africans so much that even if you were playing like Afro beat music at a very low tone, that put a woman would storm out of her house and complain on some we can't be listening to this african music every single day it's loud and i'm studying and when you go out when you go outside to listen to what it is that is apparently so loud you will come to discover that the music that you are playing the woman can hear it when she parks her car when she parks her car go garage in your high and in her carport yeah uh when she parks her car but if she goes inside the house it's in it's inaudible entirely yeah like overhearing a person's tv as you are walking right by but once you're inside your own house you can't hear them yeah that woman would complain about the smallest little sound that she hears when she's outside of her house and she would lament like this in a way that one day she even blurted it out that all of this black music all of this african music i'm sick and tired i'm always studying i don't want to keep hearing it type thing i was like no it's not that you don't want to hear that music at all it's that you don't want to hear black music that's the problem so now when you get like a neighbor moving in that that's like a black person after you've endured all that uh, level of racist nonsense from like a neighbor that came and went type thing you'd be like oh pinky i'm so glad that you're a sister fellow black power zone thank you so much eh? and my previous neighbor did not even like it when i listened to a little bit of afro beat you know popping and popping so i'm glad that i moved next to oh somebody come in to my jar that is a little bit more accommodating of the blackness eh? together my sister forever Thinking that, yeah, okay, you've got a black neighbor, so you're good. And this neighbor becomes worse than Cassandra, the, 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 the intolerant white girl that was racist. Yeah. Oh, that Cassandra. Then doubt you were bad blow concerning, was just lamenting about your Afrobeat music. But she wasn't in your house every day and all day. But you go and you travel all the way to, to Binky's house. And you knock on her door and you give her a casserole. Oh, some welcome neighbor, neighbor. So glad that you are here because you and I, we can't relate. You and I, we can't relate. You and I, we can't relate. And then that person becomes an even grander bane of your existence than the one prior. What I'm trying to explain to you is that Cassandra, right, is, is like the tenement of the world around you that annoys you. The world of human beings that annoy you. Um, and they, they tend to hurt you. They, they break your heart, you know. Hurt people hurt people. You know that saying. Human beings will break your heart. They'll be racist. They'll be discriminatory. They'll be sexist. They'll be all different kinds of ists. Mm. They will have some problems. They will give you some issues. Yeah. But then when you turn to the devil, that's what's good. In order to deal with the fact that you are sick and tired of the way that people treat you. So you are grateful that a person with whom you can relate has moved in. Eh? Someone that's going to give you the kingdoms of this world in order for you to worship him. Or rather, hey, worship him in order that you might gain the kingdoms of this world. You will start missing human company. You will miss the most meanest of most nastiest of most treacherous neighbors that kept on giving you grief for playing afrobeat music but at least they weren't in your house they went all up in your charata when you saw each other passing one another in the street you passed each other's shade and didn't greet because you know y'all don't like each other but at least that chick was not all up in your hair like a tick you will miss cassandra when the devil has possessed your home you will miss cassandra you will wish that she moves back like papa you will wish that you could go back to good old-fashioned days where before you started sabotaging people that hurt you yeah yeah you will you will wish that you will that you would endure good old-fashioned road rage that you have to go to work crying oh some dude cut me off in traffic <sighs> but then you move on however well, when you turn to sorcery that dude that cut you off in traffic you're like i'm gonna handle him and then you curse him I'm going to handle him. And then you blurt out obscenities. You, you handle you. He hurts you. And then you go and you cast a spell on the Oki. Because how dare you cut me in traffic. Yeah, you will miss the good old fashioned days when you just took human indiscretion in your stride. Cried about it. 
You were a bit bitter for two days and then you moved on. You will miss the days when you just let life be. The days when you just went through the modes. Okay? Everybody goes through stuff. People upset you. They irritate you. They fight you when you don't have it coming. Mm. But like, you let them be after that. On some, one day's one day. <laughs> one day's one day. <laughs> one day's one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Karma, karma. What goes around comes back around. You will miss the days when you believed in karma. For instance, where it is that you thought that uh, one day your karma pens you, who are always road raging people. One day somebody's gonna cut you off. One day somebody's gonna drive your car off the road. One day somebody's gonna shoot you dead. Onzoli bizu uluana, cutting people off in traffic. One day's one day. That's how we used to be growing up, wasn't it? Mm. Love the coffee. Oh, look at my hair, macho. Rig, rig, yeah, there we go. Filter in my hour and say, who can? Yeah, you will miss the days when whenever people hurt you, you might labor on it, just kind of stew on the issue for three days on some. But how could Jabu do that? How could he? How could he? But then you, you know, time. I mean, time makes you forget that Jabu did that. Time makes you forget that somebody cut you off in traffic. Like, during the day, as the day's progressing and at work, you stop thinking about the dude that cut you off in traffic, don't you? You do. You stop thinking about him. Even though in the office, when you rock up, you're all frazzled, your hair's out of place, you're upset, maybe even uh, emotional, telling some neighbors there was this uh, idiot uh, in the road, on the road, that cut me off. I nearly hit him. It was nearly a bumper bashing, my goodness, because he literally did a dead break in front of me after he overtook me, because he was all about that road rage business. I can't believe it, and you'll have a discussion over breakfast at work with your colleagues about how this dude irritated you but then you know you go to your first meeting um you, you know you'll have to progress your project plan then you know you'll have to etc you get my point and then next thing that random buffoon in traffic will be a far far away on the edge of the world was that random buffoon that cut me off in traffic i'm not thinking about him because i've got a stakeholder to please i have got to win an account and I'm not thinking anymore about him. Yeah, you forget about people that hurt you. Because that's the thing about God and a shock absorber. He enables us to overcome. The God of the universe has made us to recover after we've been hurt. We heal, eh? We get pimples and then they fade, leaving a dark spot. Dark mark and then a little bit of kojic acid and it's, it's gone. After a couple of months, don't nobody need to know that you had acne. Human beings heal. Human beings heal. Human beings recover after infractions have slapped them silly and upon not trusting that wonderful process given us by God to not to no longer have acne scarring after four months of really just going in with that salicylic acid going in with that kojic acid going in with the hydro um uh, the, is it hydroxyquinone i mean really like via prescription you get my point yeah after a couple of months of going in with whatever might be a vitamin c serum retinol the thing that's going to enable cell turnover at a rapid rate so that you can recover your skin after a couple of months you won't even remember the location of that particular zit where it was and put aqua one right now it just rocked up all up in my grill and it, it, it okay this one was a couple of days ago there's one over here that doesn't even show uh because it's, it's still kind of growing out and then it's gonna go all dark and it's gonna end up looking like this yeah but after like four five months i won't even know that there was the acne there i won't even know that there was a pimple over there i won't know I won't know why. Because God has made our bodies to heal. God has made human beings to heal, even emotionally. Yeah, hey? The guy that frazzles you and makes you cry in traffic because he cut you off. You forget about him by 12 p.m. in the afternoon in the office. You forget about him. You don't spend your day lingering on him unless you're one of those grudge-holding randos because, you know, there are people like that on earth. Just hold on to a grudge for like every other day. But largely, we, we, we move on. However, people get involved in the occult. Shame. People get involved in black magic, y'all. That's what's good. They get involved in black magic, and because of being involved in black magic, they now want to just kind of handle everybody. The Bible says, uh, I'm sorry, I got a burp. It's just what happens in these streets. The Bible says that, um, do not repay evil for evil, but with kindness heap coals of shame on the heads of those who afflict you. Hey? Mm. The Bible also says, vengeance is of the Lord. Mm. The battle is the Lord's. Mm, God has given us a shock absorber inside, internally, be it emotional, psychological, and even physical, to basically recover after pain has whammied us. 
And if you wait for that process to do its work, its completeness in you, you will be grateful at the end of the day for having just let bygones be bygones. Like, just let things be. You don't gotta fight everything. Goodness gracious, but no. People involved in the occult, you be like, Twati! 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 Taste! Everyone that hurts you. Everyone that hurts you. Like, everyone that hurts you. I remember, uh, back in the day, my cousin, right? So, she went to Guiani with her other cousins. She had, like, on her sister's side, well, she had, she has a half sister. And that half sister had family in Guiani. And it was all fun for them to go there. I used to cover it, frankly, the whole, like, you know, traveling to that joint because they always came back so happy. Like, they were like, oh, it was so much fun. And I was like, but why wasn't I there? I missed out. Anyway, they would go to Guiani. Once every two years, or whatever, and in Guiani, apparently, allegedly, they sell these, like, head-sized mangoes. These human-sized mangoes. Like, they are the size of human heads. Mm, right? Just mango. Ah! Nachi goats. Nachi goats. Remember that advert? Nachi. Lemon! Anyway, whatever, it is an Oros ad. Mm. So, they had these, like, human head-sized mangoes that they sold in Guiani, like the, 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 the export of Guiani, if you want to call it that. And my cousin was actually telling us about these delectable mangoes from Guiani that were sold by these Makosis, right? These ladies that sell uh, them with, uh, and they put them like on their heads. They put like a whole bunch of these like head-sized mangoes in these like uh, bowls that they would then put on their heads and be like, mango, mango, mango at the bus station at the bus terminal right where it is that they were boarding to return back to johannesburg that's what's good mm. my cousin then goes on right there here to tell me this one story of how it is that they were there at the bu bus terminal right and these ladies were like mango mango trying to sell mangoes to the people in the buses that were about to leave and the one dude plotted and schemed in the bus on some me i want a guiani mango i want a mango the size of a hedge i want a mango for free i don't want patches a mango i don't have money to buy a mango me i'm going to take it here's this dude in the bus out of plotting and scheming to steal a mango the size of a head yeah i'm cozy mango 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 take you some mango take you some mango these are them cozies right and this dude's like this is how we're gonna steal plotting and scheming like pinky and the brain try to take over the mangoes oh! this dude is not just scheming and plotting stealing the mango and how it is that his plan was going to fruition allegedly apparently was by as the bus was driving off then him i get it they were on the heads of these ladies uh, go out of the window <laughs> of them bus. great the mango, they were so big you had to use both your hands. <laughs> Grab the mango and just creeps. <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> he was like, try. he was planning on when the bus drone drives off, go and grab the mangoes from on top of these women's heads. So essentially, peep out the glass window, the window of the bus, and creeps, and then the bus drives off. Yeah, and this dude was actually plotting. I'm gonna take over the mangoes. And apparently he was counseled. Very, 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 like, dearly and nearly and loftily. Like, he was warned, like, admonished, like, as in, Dinda Khafarangosi. By the people with whom he was chatting about stealing a mango, right? He was planned to, like, I'm gonna steal the mango. And then he was counseled to not even dare do that. But you go and then they started to tell a story. Started to tell a story, like an urban legend, right? They were like, don't steal these Mkozis mangoes. Because here lies the deal. These Mkozis are not just Mkozis, they're spiritual Mkozis. And they are dangerous. They are witches. And if you steal any of their mangoes, they will say to you, And you are not going to get to the end of the day, my brother. What Ilanga Linga Shoni means is may the sun not set. It is an incantation or a curse, apparently, that basically says that by the time the sun sets today, you'll be dead. By the time the sun sets today, you'll be dead. So they like, Ilanga Linga Shoni, the sun mustn't set. And pretty much the end of that sentence is, the sun must not set before you're out. Like a light. Mm. 
Yeah, so they warned him on Sampudwam, if you want to make it to the age of whatever your next birthday is, you will leave those mangoes alone. If you want one, keep him mild, out of your pocket and pay. And, and just go home. Because these mokosis are known for ending some lives. You don't just steal from Labo Mkosi. You don't just deliver like these mokosis because they're going to tell you, in a shun, as the bus disappears. And then you then aren't, you're not making it because you get a heart attack before the bus even lands. Go Park Station in Johannesburg. Mmm, yeah. And that kind of like random rubbish. Yeah, where it is that everybody that done died, that done did you dirty. You are to try and kill them. That's the work of witches. That's the work of the occult right there. Guess the promotion instead of you. Steal your man. You have beef passes above you. Raises your shoulder by mistake as they're walking past you in traffic, not in traffic, in, 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 in the street. You get to that point, witches, yo, eh? So I'm kidding it. Everybody, you keep on saying of people, personally, even though I have not gone out of my way to hurt some people, people have hurt me, my reaction has been to preach against them, speak against them, basically just kind of highlight that this here is a problem, y'all need Christ, I know, the response is, oh, the way that they try to kill the death rituals, Dead spells over my dead wood, you are. And I'm garabo. You are not going to marry thoughts. Yeah, me, I want you. You are my wife. I decided it because me, I fast come, fast served, sister. I found you fast. They are your YouTube channel. Me, I find you interesting. Yeah, I find you beautiful. I look at your body, you are, and I can just imagine myself being baby daddy. So, if you decide that you don't want me, eh, the amount of dead spells I endure at the hands of men, women, like proper human individuals in these streets that are telling themselves that over my dead body, you before you will go and do what I say you don't do, which is you are controlling. You are ridiculous. May the sun never set until Karab was dead. Why? Because she refused to be my wife. has been shown for 10 years. You don't get since you can you know, music, a minute, I'm like a good chance of put them. So, no, it's not gonna work. But you see, that's just my thing. How blamina in that kind of indiscretion? When you're hanging out in Witchcraft Boulevard, Wonkumuntu is at day, is at risk, essentially, upon meeting you. If they so much as put one hair out of place, if they greet you, grieve you even slightly, Langa Langa Shun, the guy in traffic, you gonna make sure that. Half it the robot dome without, you know, having a head-on collision with a truck coming from some a bat out of hell. Uh, yeah, proper. You will, the guy that bro, that cuts you off in traffic upon being all upset, say, Ilanga Linga Shun. So you don't just go to the office. Cry. <gasps> How dare you, the guy in traffic? He was so mean. Oh! You don't just end there. You also are like, yeah, Andy's gonna be dead by tonight. <gasps> Who in the world lives on an earth like that? Ah, you guys. Yo, the battle is the Lord's, but you see, those Makosis, if I was somebody with like Archer grapes, they are mango. Yeah, and they cried about it on some and then moved on Ash and within two days that man that 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 Sango that 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 what is it, that Mkozi would have recovered. Within two days, within two days, she would have recovered. Within likely by that evening. Likely by that evening, she probably would have even um what is this? Concocted a strategy to not get stolen from anymore. So making a decision to sell differently. Because you know, how do you avoid shrinkage of stock? Um yeah, just don't put your little bowl on your head while buses are driving off because you know you've been shown some flames before. So upon employing a new strategy to sell mangoes, you then ascertain on that day, maybe putting them in a sack and, and carrying the sack around or something, you, you limit the risk of, of having somebody steal from you. And even though you got to now cut those losses, you know, that, that that particular shrinkage has happened to your stock, you're going to have to declare those losses, unfortunately. But nonetheless, you've recovered. And guess what you have? A clear conscience. I need to pee. Yeah, I'm back. I have returned. And I am relieved. And I'm sorry for my flying off filter. Anyway, yeah. So basically, when you try to consult Satan, knock on his door, in order to deal with whatever problems you have in life, like whoever's hurting you, yeah, you're inviting a neighbor, 
that frankly is like Binky instead of Cassandra into your house and then she just never stops coming. She's annoying. Like go and read that proverb actually about that neighbor that like um that just does not know when to stop. That that just cannot get the step in. Like yeah, even like there is a scripture in the Proverbs speaking about a neighbor that just won't leave and how it is that that neighbor is a snare to those people that they visit. I actually want to look it up.